Captain! I, I can't I, do no, anything no, to you. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Rito, Rito, Rito. Good. I'm a Cardinals and a Sox fan, so. There you go. I like this guy already. Yeah. Get the hell out of you. <laughs> I threw them a ball. Oh, there it is.
driving me crazy. Like, I couldn't find that shit. It's right here the whole time. Go, go, go! In and out now, here we go. I wasn't arguing. No, I know you wouldn't. You know what, dude? It's my fault. I, no, I, I know. I just didn't hear it. I wasn't paying attention. We're good. Thank you. I knew it was a story.
close to it. He's not going to hustle. I'm not going to hustle. <laughs> Oh, 
but this is a dangerous hitter to say the least. 39 home runs during the regular season, and he's been swinging the bat well in the playoffs. The Cubs looking to strike early. The leadoff man is on. And the 1-0, and there's a fastball that Maeda does not get the call on. That looked like a pretty good pitch. And Maeda's got kind of a sarcastic, bewildered smile on his face. It was a fastball that was either called low or away. But boy, that was a pretty good looking pitch. Go, 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 go. Two miles an hour. Looked like more like a four scene at the bottom of the zone. Yeah. Yeah. At the 15 meters against this offense. So he's fall behind two and oh. Now he'll step off and look Fowler back to the bag. Fowler with 13 stolen bases during the season. After Bryant, it'll be Rizzo. The Dodgers in their classic home white uniforms with the blue caps and the red numerals and the Cubs in their road grays as the 2-0 pitch is swung on and hit in the air down the left field line. It will stay in the park just shy of the track and now coming in a little bit at the last moment is Kendrick to make the catch. Fowler tagged at first and halfway to second then went back. As it looked for a moment like Kendrick caught that ball. Might put him right up against the fence, but in the last moment he came in four or five strides, shy of the track to make the catch. Well, on a 2-0 pitch, they came up, they came in. It was a strike, but that's a dangerous spot to go. If you get it perfectly, you can tie Brian up, but if you miss it all in, in and up, that's a pitch he usually does a lot of damage with. Just a little bit under that and not quite the extension he was looking for. So one on, one out, and here's Rizzo. And you said before last night's game, you thought Rizzo was actually having some pretty good advance. The results were not there yet, but you weren't really surprised that he broke out last night. No, I thought we saw at the end of game two, I hold thought on, on, his on, plate on. discipline got better. I thought he carried it over into game three, and then last night saw the fruits of that. The shift on for the Dodgers as the curveball misses down and in ball one from Tenta Maeda. Rizzo during the year slugged 32 homers, drove in 109, and three hits, including a home run in last night's game. Maeda now to the Rosin bag off the back of the mound, just now getting back on the rudder. As Rizzo settles into the box. Seeger alone on the left side of the infield. Turner's around on the ship between first and second. The set by the right-hander, and the 1-0 a swing and a miss. 1-1. There's another change up there from Maeda, his second of the night. This time, though, he gets it down. He gets good movement on it down and away. And on a 1-0 count, he's got Rizzo a little bit out in front. A much better pitch than the one he threw Fowler for the base hit. And now Maeda will step <laughs> off again. Fowler being held on at first by Gonzalez. Not a lot of room on the right side, the way that Hernandez, Turner, and Gonzalez are stationed right now. One and one the count on Rizzo. Throw to first. And diving back in easily is Dexter Fowler. You know, early on, Dan, I don't expect them to do a lot of running. Maeda's pretty quick to first base. He's fairly quick to home. Ruiz throws very good behind the plate and I just think the Cubs and Joe Madden will want to see what they're dealing with Maeda from a stuff standpoint. I feel like they feel like they can get to him with the bats early. The right hander sets. Fowler is running and the pitch is lined down the right field line. That's a fair ball. It's going to get all the way down into the corner where it's picked up by Pui. Fowler getting the wave around third and will score without a throw on an RBI double by Rizzo. I'm not going to tell you. To nothing comes here early. Well, this score, 10-0. 10-0. But Dan, he went to the slider and he tried to bury it down and in, and that has been a pitch that's been so effective for him all season long, whether it be to right-handers or to left-handers. It just doesn't quite have the bite and the crispness that really I saw a lot of from Maeda the first half. That ball stays enough on the plate, and Rizzo's able to center it and sting it down that right field line. So he stays hot, and the Cubs have a one to nothing lead in the first inning. The batter now, Ben Zobris, the left fielder, 3 for 15 so far in the postseason, or in this series, rather, 194 in the postseason. Zobris, the switch hitter, batting for the left side against the right hitter, Maeda. Seager, the shortstop, station right behind Rizzo, the runner out at second. Outfielder slightly playing Zobris to pull as he takes a curveball for a strike. Zobris says, I'm not a cleanup hitter, I just hit fourth. He doesn't think of himself as a power guy. And last night, he dropped a bunt down. He dropped the bunt down. He beat out a swinging bunt for his second hit. Here's the 0-1, and he takes it low. And that bunt, maybe the biggest hit the Cubs have had, although the Montero Grand Slam obviously was enormously important. But as big a hit, perhaps, 
as the Cubs have had in the postseason because they had gone 21 innings in a row without scoring a run. And then Zobris led off the fourth inning with a bunt single. There was a bloop single after that, a throwing error, an RBI single, and eventually a two-run home run by Addison Russell capping that four-run inning. One and one the count. Maeda the set and the pitch, and he misses down and in with a breaking ball, ball two. And if the Cubs are able to go on and win this series and go to the World Series, that'll be, that bunt will be a play that's talked about a lot in Chicago for years to come. I really believe with potentially that big a play at the time for a struggling offense. Something Zobris did on his own. Something Joe Madden told us Zobris did in a playoff game when Zobris was with the Rays and Madden was managing the Rays in a playoff series against Texas a few years back. Maeda, a long look at a Ruiz. They can't get together on a side. So Maeda will step off. Perhaps the presence of Rizzo out at second to complicated things a little bit as Ruiz has gone to a much more elaborate set of signs and now he's going to have to go to the mound. They either aren't communicating well or Maeda is refusing to throw whatever pitches or pitch it is that Ruiz is putting down. Yeah, not really sure. They're going with more than just your standard signs with the, with the fingers. Before Ruiz starts to give those fingers, he taps on his different spots of his body, probably just alerting Maeda what sign we're going with in a particular sequence. And again, that's because there's a runner out at second, so they've got to make it more complicated so that location can't be given. Now here's the 2-1, and it's a change-up that misses just up and away, and Maeda actually did a little on the mound after not getting that call. It kind of exhales a little bit as if to say, man, this has been hard so far. They've got a run off me already. I haven't gotten a couple of calls, and it looks a little bit, not flustered, but a little bit frustrated out of the mound. I look back at the runner at second, and the 3-1 down and away, ball four. He's walks over. So it's a run in, two men on, only one out for the Cubs here in the first inning. And he's been behind these hitters as well, Dan, and that's something he just can't afford to do. His stuff is not crisp enough at this point in the season if he's going to routinely pitch from behind in the count, especially against this dangerous Cubs offense. He's got to start getting ahead, and then his secondary stuff can play a little bit. Here's Javier Baez, and now Ruiz to the mound again to talk to Maeda. Ruiz covering his mouth with his glove so nobody can read his lips or hear what he's saying as he has a quick conversation with his pitcher. And now shoots as he's known and is crouched behind the plate. Ruiz getting the start tonight because the left-hander John Lester is on the mound. And Dave Roberts really likes the quality of the that Ruiz has against left-handed pitching. Veteran guy, obviously, 37 years of age and a big part of those great Phillies teams. First and second one out, one nothing. Cubs and a fastball from Maeda is down and away ball one to Baez. And that, that's a missed bat. I mean, Maeda's a guy, a command guy. And, and he's just trying to throw a fastball away there to get ahead. And Dan, he misses bad. He looks a little confused mechanically speaking. And I don't think it's going to be much longer before that phone starts to ring and you start to see action in that Dodger pen. Which is a bit of a problem because they used so many guys last night when they got bombed 10-2. to None of the key guys, none of the top three guys, I should say. But... Here's the 1-0 to Baez, and a slider misses outside. Ball two. There's a lot of grumbling right now at Dodger Stadium. Dave Roberts knows he's got an off day tomorrow, but boy, he doesn't want to have to get eight-plus innings out of his bullpen tonight after having, needing five and a third out of his relievers last night. 2-0 the count. The Cubs already up one to nothing, and looking for a big first inning here in Los Angeles. Is waiting patiently in the box as now Maeda straightens up with the sign. And the 2-0 and a swing and a foul back at a breaking ball. He got up in the zone and is maybe a bit fortunate. Baez didn't do something with that. Yeah, he had a great swing on that pitch. It was a slider and it was on the outer half and enough to the outer half where it, maybe Baez just missed it by a hair, but he was on it on time. Adam. And he had a big swing at it. It just did miss putting that in play with some authority. Anthony Rizzo has doubled in a run already. He's out at second with one out. Ben Zobras to walk is at first. And Baez has something in his eye, I believe, as he asks for time. Steps out of the box trying to get whatever it is out of his eye so he can see clearly. Seeger again 
way over in the hole at short. So a pretty good gap where a shortstop would normally be playing. Already 17 pitches thrown by Maeda. Only one first pitch strike to the five batters he's faced. Here's the 2-1, and a fastball swung on and missed, 2-2. Two two. Challenge, probably his best fastball so far of the inning, even though, again, he missed his spot a little bit. 92, though, it looked like it had some real good life to it. They wanted to go down the way. It kind of runs back over the heart of the plate. And, Dan, looking at that replay, it's right down the middle. Baez with that big swing, though, just a little bit late. Let's see if he cuts down that swing a little bit now with a count 2-2. Two and two. A chance to drive in Rizzo with a base hit. Maeda has his sign. He sets and deals, and a fastball is there for strike three called over the outside corner. A big second out for Maeda. Yeah, Maez freezes and acts like maybe it was away a little bit. It was a four-seam fastball, and it does look like it's maybe a ball or two off the plate, which is how I saw it originally, because the, there was no run back to the outside corner. It was just a straight four-seam fastball at 92, but he did hit the center of the body of Carlos Ruiz behind home plate in a big second out, and you saw a little emotion from Kenta Maeda knowing that that was a big out. So if he can get Jason Hayward, he can get out of it with just one run scoring. Hayward last night, 0 for 5 in the game as he takes ball one. He did have an RBI ground out, but boy, hits have been few and far between for Hayward, hitting 0 83 in the postseason. First and second, two down, one nothing Cubs. We're just underway here at the top of the first of game five. Ruiz flashing the spots, and now Maeda has the one he wants. The 1-0, -oh. and a swing of the ball popped up back of the plate. Ruiz racing back to the screen, but it won't have a play. It's well back into the seats. What do you see when you when you watch Hayward at the plate right now? I, I just see a lot of confusion. I see a guy that has an unorthodox swing and approach as it is. But obviously, having such a difficult year, it can become something very much between the ears. And he's just having a hard time being on time and getting beat by good fastballs routinely right now. One and one the count as Maeda steps off again. Now turns his attention back to the plate. Hayward waiting. Big left-handed batter. A look back at second by Maeda. And the 1-1 one -one and the breaking ball misses down and in, almost at the back foot. Okay, we're two balls in the strike. Well, now if you're Hayward, I mean, you understand teams attack you and have been with fastballs all season long. But after a slider there, you're now in a 2-1 count. This is the time you really want to zone up the fastball, get it ready, and try and put something to play hard. But really sell out on what should be a fastball in this situation. By eight of the set. And the 2-1, and he went with a change up there, and he catches the bottom end of the zone. It's 2-2. Two two. Maybe his best change up of the inning, Dan. Bottom fell out of it, caught the bottom of the strike zone, and I think caught Hayward off guard. And, and they're on their feet now, waving their blue Dodger towels around here in Los Angeles, trying to help Maeda out of this jam with minimal damage. <laughs> He's got his sign, and the 2-2, and a curveball is hit, a swinging butt up the third baseline, and it will roll foul at the last moment as Hayward broke his back. Good decision by Turner to let it roll. He did not have a play, but that ball stayed straight for the longest time and then spun to the left. Yeah, the way he hit it off the end of that bat with the bat shattering, it right away Dan so it's just a matter of once it hit that dirt and Justin Turner knows the field here at Dodger Stadium you understand what that ball is typically going to do especially when there's that slicing spin on it <laughs> so we'll do it all over again with a two and two count two on two out one up in Cubs a long arduous first inning for Kenta Maeda The pitch and a swing and a grounder foul up the first baseline. I think that's five off-speed pitches. We've seen the curveball. We've seen a couple sliders. 
we've seen a couple change-ups. Just one fastball in this at-bat with Hayward, which is a little bit surprising considering how teams have attacked him, especially in the postseason. At some point, you would think they would try to dial up with the best fastball he's got on the inside part of the plate, maybe with some elevation. Infielders playing him to pull, outfielders as well, but not quite to the same extent. The battle continues. The 2-2 swing and a miss at a high fastball. And the inning is over. The Cubs, though, do get a run on an RBI double by Anthony Rizzo. And lead 1-0 going to the bottom of the first. This is the National League Championship Series on ESPN Radio. Presented by AutoZone. In my line of work, I'm trying to make a difference. Not a billion dollars. But I want to save for the future, too. So this year, I partnered with TIAA to help me map out a plan. If I stick to it, I could have an income stream for life and maintain my lifestyle in retirement. Looks like a life of rewarding work could pay off for a lifetime. Your personal success takes a financial partner who values it as much as you do. Learn more at TIAA.org. Geico presents... 17 minutes, guys. 17 minutes. Hey, it's me, Electricity, so I'll keep this short. <laughs> Get it? Never mind. Anyway, I just want to make sure you're not, like, still mad at me about that electrical fire in your kitchen. I mean, obviously you're not, but I'm just checking to make sure. It's no big deal if you are. It's not like you're asking me to pay for the damage. <laughs> right? Electricity won't pay for an electrical fire. Luckily, the GEICO Insurance Agency makes getting coverage a snap. Visit GEICO.com to see how affordable renter's insurance can be. Are you tired of being compared to products that work as hard as you do? Why don't you use a brand like Valvoline that works harder now so you don't have to break your back later? Get five quarts of Valvoline Sin Power Full Synthetic or Full Synthetic High Mileage for just $26.99 at Advanced Auto Parts. Synthetics with a reputation for reducing engine wear, which could save you a trip under the hood later. Advanced Auto Parts. Let's get you back on the road. See store for details. Sometimes the best seats in the house are in bubble. In college football, that's the big year play. For more than 60 years, we've seen what it takes to be worthy. It takes toughness, dedication, and perseverance. Because seasons aren't measured by wins and losses, but by hard. Some call it hard work. <laughs> Six innings only gave up a run. A no decision and an eventual win for the Cubs. He was great against the Giants in his start of that series. Eight shutout innings. DK Hernandez will lead it off for the Dodgers. He'll show Bunn and take low ball one. And the, the plot develops already because of it's not just Lester's inability to throw to first when a runner's on. It's his inability to throw to any base at any time. And will the Dodgers try to drop some punts down and make him play defense? Hernandez shows bunt, pulls the bat back, and takes ball two. Although I didn't think he was in, he was backing out of the box before that pitch was on the way. It didn't look like he was any, in any position really to bunt that ball. Which is possible, but Lester has missed his spot sadly the yeah. first two pitches. So he might have seen it early. They're going to try to get in his head. The 2-0 down and away to the fastball. Ball three. And Joe Madden even said that all the traffic on the bases, all the bluff bunts, he felt like did have a little bit of effect on Lester back in game one. 3-0 on the way, and showing Bunn and taking ball four. Never intended to punt on that pitch, of course. Hernandez draws the leadoff walk, and that's about exactly how Dave Roberts would have drawn up the first plate appearance of the night. It was, and now we'll see how aggressively Kike Hernandez is over at first base with his lead. Remember, if you are going to run against John Lester, 
it's not good enough to just go first move because he's fairly quick to home plate. You've got to get a big lead, a place that you would normally be uncomfortable. What you're banking on is his inability or unwillingness even to throw over to first base. Yeah, for people who may not know, as great a pitcher as he is, John Lester can't slash well, but it starts with can't make quality throws. Huge lead at first. Showing Bunt taking a strike is Turner. Hernandez had a very, very big lead, but no matter how big the lead is, Lester will not throw. And he's in the right spot to go. Sometimes when you watch teams against Lester, they don't aren't willing to get that far out there. If you do not go in your KK Hernandez, you better be careful with the secondary because David Ross loves to throw behind the runner. Hernandez was way out there again, and Lester stepped off. This is all a mental game. It's a mental hurdle for Lester, and it's something the Dodgers are trying to exploit in any way they can. Big lead not going. Snap or fake throw down by Ross. He doesn't throw as Turner takes ball one. A big burden on David Ross behind the plate. Yeah, and that time, T.K. Hernandez did not get a secondary lead like he did the first time. That's why Ross came up to throw seeing how he reacted after the first pitch. And now Hernandez off to a racing start then put the brakes on as the 1-1 is in for a strike, 1-2. and two. So the next level is it's all well and good to dance and dart and dive and all that stuff, but you eventually have to go. And we'll see if Hernandez will. Although I think part of it is just to see if they can distract John Lester, make him upset, make him frustrated with all the antics that are going on on the bases. It's got to frustrate him, even though he doesn't show it. As Turner takes inside, two balls and two strikes. With Lester, it can manifest itself in not throwing to first when a runner's on, in not being able to throw to second on a comebacker when there's a runner at first, in not being able to throw accurately to first if they bunt on him and he has to make the play. Again, it's remarkable for one of the best pitchers on the planet, but it's a major issue for him. The 2-2 two -two and a swing and a miss, and Turner strikes out for the first out of the inning. And, and, and Lester's not showing a lot of emotion, but you can tell it's annoying him. And after that strikeout right there, he kind of puffs his chest out like, yeah, do all this antics and stuff. I'm just going to get you out. And that's where Lester has to keep his mind. He can't let the... The, the tomfoolery, the clownishness on the bases, which it looks like the Dodgers are really trying to do, to just see if, if nothing else, they can get into the mind of John Lester and take him out of his game. Hernandez, again, with a very big lead, although almost leaning back to first with that big lead, as Seager swings and fouls one off, and it went down to a knee because of the force of that swing. You know, he's, he's kind of hopping over there. He's kind of skipping off first base moving his arms around it's almost like it's almost like a skit <laughs> so too much in your mind or? no I, I think it's all fair and game you want to try and get in the head of john lester but i think at some point you got to go he's in position to go yeah he's got a big lead he is not going and seager takes outside a ball and a strike the 